that Wyoming will be your new home. Life on the Red Horse Ranch. <laughs> It's evening at Red Horse Ranch, and all the boys are down in the corral. For the time being, they've forgotten about Steve Bradford and his attempt to buy the Red Horse Ranch from Sam Carter. Alabama has finally decided it's time to break Red, his beautiful roan horse. Let's join them and see if Alabama has any luck. Goodbye, old Payton, I'm a-leaving Cheyenne. Yeah. Goodbye, old Payton, I'm a-leaving Cheyenne. I'm a-leaving Cheyenne, I'm off for Montana. Goodbye, old paid, I'm a-leaving Cheyenne. My feet are in stirrups, my bridle's in my hand. Goodbye, my little donny, my pony won't stand. Goodbye, old paid, I'm a-leaving Cheyenne. Goodbye, old paid, I'm a-leaving Cheyenne. I'm a-leaving Cheyenne, I'm off for Montana. Goodbye, old paid, I'm a-leaving Cheyenne. Old Payne's a good pony, he paces when he can. Goodbye, my little Annie, I'm off to Montana. Goodbye, old Payne, I'm a leaving Cheyenne. Goodbye, old Payne, I'm a leaving Cheyenne. I'm a leaving Cheyenne, I'm off for Montana. Goodbye, old Payne, I'm a leaving Cheyenne. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you sure you got your cot all made up at the bunkhouse, Alabama? Well, what in tarnation are you talking about, Bob? Well, I just figured we wouldn't want to bother about that when we had to carry you up there. <laughs> <laughs> you better get the book for you up, Arizona. We may have to drive two or three miles to find Alabama after it gets off that bronc. <laughs> <laughs> well, go on with your joking, boys. Have a good time. But wait till Tenderfoot and Idaho drive that pony in here. You're heading for the surprise of your life. Well, you're going to have to get someone else besides me to help saddle him. I don't count on being pawed to death. <laughs> I'm saddling Red myself. No one's going to touch that horse any time but me. Well, you ain't going to be touching him long. You won't even have time to pull leather. <laughs> you never saw me pull leather yet, did you, Arizona? I never saw you try to ride a cyclone before, neither. <laughs> Why, uh, Tex Orange, you tin horn, you come down off of that fence. <laughs> I ought to break your neck for laughing at me like that. <laughs> you better save your energy for Red. He'll give you enough fight. Yeah, get your guitar, Tex, and sing him something soothing. Oh, here's one for Alabama, all right. <laughs> As I was going to Penortal in town, riding a horseback on a gray mare. She had a white mane and tail and a list on her back, and there wasn't a hair on her but what was coal black. My mare stood still, she threw me in the ditch. She bruised my shirt, she dirtied my skin. I mounted my bridle and saddle again, and with my tin toes I rode over the plain. Had a king and a queen and a company more Riding on horseback, a walking before Musicians with fiddlers are beating the drum With his heels in his pockets, oh how he did run I pulled off my head with a natural disgrace Asking the way, though I knew not the place 
It made them all ashamed. They scarcely looked down and asked them the way to the Northern town. I went to bed to take a night's ease. I scarcely could sleep for the lice and the fleas. Rolled and tumbled and scratched all night. I scarcely could scratch just as fast as they'd bite. I rode up the streets, no one could I see. The streets were all crowded, gazing at me. The bells were all tolled, the people did stare to see a coach and six horses drawn by a gray bear. I set my set down on a hot frozen stone. A thousand all round me, I was there all alone. Of a glass of wine to drive sadness away And a staffle in the dust and it rained all day It rained and it hailed and it stood in the storm I had to hold my hat in my hand to keep my head warm I asked Miss Susie would you fancy me now And we would get married tomorrow just now <laughs> a gray mare I'm a feeling, Tex. No, sir. He's young and he's red and he ain't a horse. He's a wildcat. Say, <laughs> hey, here come the boys now. And they're driving red in, showing up. Yeah. Let's yeah. be down off this fence. Hey, get away from the gate there. You'll get kicked in the middle next Friday. Close the gate there, one of you fellas. But stay on the outside. <laughs> well, he knows who's boss. Uh, now, keep down off of that fence. You make him nervous. Well, he makes me nervous, all right. <laughs> Come on, Red. Nobody's going to hurt you. It's just your old partner, Alabama. Better let us hear him down for you, Alabama. <laughs> no one's touching Red but me. Keep away from his head, Alabama. He'll have you eared down. <laughs> Easy there, Red. Stand still. Thank you, Will. <laughs> Here, how about a lump of sugar? <laughs> there you are. Open your mouth. <laughs> That's it. That bridle ain't going to hurt you. Got his bridle on, all right. Yeah, but wait till he tries to saddle that bridle. Don't look too good to me. That bronc ain't so much as winked an eye. Uh, just wait till he comes on board. He'll set up a whirlwind that'll tear things up from here to the globe. Well, we'll see plenty. Plenty of daylight under Alabama. <laughs> Stand still now, Red. I'll just tighten up these cinches just a little. There you are. And now, boys, you'll see how a good cowboy rides. High, wide, and handsome. Now watch Alabama eat red. Hey, Alabama, I'm warning you for the last time. That red is the kind of a horse that throws you over his ear or else rolls on you. Boy, He's you so yeah. Better mount him from the front, Alabama. I don't like them hind feet. Well, here I go. He's in the saddle. Ride him, Alabama. Yeah. Easy, boy. Oh, the horse hasn't moved a muscle. Well, you could trade me for a prairie dog. That horse is as tame as an old tomcat. Nice. <laughs> now, come on, Red. Let's take a little turn around the pen. Uh, that's it. Uh, now, a little faster. Easy now. Uh, Arizona, yeah. open the gate. Sure, I'll open it. <laughs> uh, and now, let's show him a little speed, Red. to think that I laid off half a day's work to see that. Well, we didn't get any excitement here. Come on, Arizona, get hold of that banjo. Yeah, come on. Maybe you can get it to kick a little, huh? Sure, have me old Nelly. There it is. Whoa, get it.
been doing for the last three months. You know, I never thought a horse could be trained without getting the tarnation beat out of him. Here he comes back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. I, I reckon that's enough for today. Uh, take this out of with you, Arizona. Yeah. Well, here come Miss Rose. Oh, hello, hello there, Miss Rose. Oh, oh, oh. Hello. Say, uh, uh, say, you sure missed out on something. Oh. Alabama rode red without half trying. He rode red? Uh-huh. Well, why didn't he tell me he was going to? Well, I guess he didn't want you to be here in case Red did get frisky, you know. Oh. We all thought Red would go wild. Well, where's Alabama now, Tenderfoot? Why, he's in the corral there. Uh, why, is there something wrong, Rose? Well, no, I I guess not. Alabama. Alabama. Oh, uh, did you want to see me, Rose? Yes, Alabama, I've got to talk to you. I've just got to. Oh, why, sure. We'll go up on the veranda. Right. Uh, let Red out of the corral, boys, but don't get near him. He might not treat you like he did me. Okay, mm. Alabama. Look down, look down that lonesome road. Hang down your head and sigh. The best of friends must part someday. And why not you? Now, uh, what was it, Rose? You look worried about something. Oh, Alabama, why haven't I been told? Why, I don't know what you mean, Rose. But you must have known. Steve Bradford was just up at the house, and he told me everything about the drought and the cattle dying. Poor Dad doesn't even know how he's going to meet the loan on the place this spring. Oh, it is true, isn't it? Why, Rose, uh, I don't know what to say. Anyhow, Steve Bradford had no business saying a word to you about it. Well, I think I should have known. And at least Steve Bradford's been kind enough to try to help us. He told me he'd made Dad an offer for the ranch. So uh, that's what he told you, is it? And to think that I haven't known this all the time. And poor Dad's been worrying himself sick over it. Oh, Alabama, why didn't you tell me? Well, your dad asked me not to. None of us wanted you to worry, Rose. Well, that's just like him. But, Alabama, we've got to do something. Well, I'd hope we could do something before you found out, Rose. Your dad's set on having you finish school now. Alabama, I'm not going back to school. I'm going to stay here with you and Dad and fight this thing through. Good for you, Rose. But it's too bad she had to find out about the trouble. And we can hardly blame Alabama for feeling angry. Why did Steve Bradford tell all this to Rose? Just what is Bradford's purpose? It's getting to be quite a mystery, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> 